This episode of Film Linen is brought to you by our Patreon page and all the members of our Wall of Awesome. Today on Film Linen, I'm wearing a wig for this effect. I'm really not comfortable wearing this. It looks stupid, doesn't it? You don't have to tell me. I know. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learn, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learn you good. And we're continuing our Killer Frost series today with this request. So we've got a whole bunch of requests for the Killer Frost hair effect. So that's what we're doing today, guys. Now in order to complete this effect, you need to shoot yourself or your actor on a green screen. Now your actor needs to either have a blonde wig like this one here. Possibly get a better wig than this because it's really bad. But it is important that your subject has blonde hair because we're going to be coloring that brown. Now you may ask yourself why we're shooting this on a green screen. Well, it's so that we can actually isolate that hair a lot better. And speaking of green screen, I want to give a big shout out to Visionary Universe and Lendon over there for his awesome ultimate green screen tutorial because that really helped me here. I had a lot of detailed little fluffy hairs because that wig is so bad and it really helped me just nail that key completely. And guys, I've been keying for a long time and this taught me a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't even know. So thanks very much, Lyndon. So you got all that? Shoot your actor on a green screen in a blonde wig or they have blonde hair. That's it. Now let's get to work, shall we? Okay guys, here we are in After Effects and I've got my shot set up in a comp and all ready to go. Now, as you can see, I've already keyed this shot out that way we can jump straight into the effect. So our first step is to duplicate our footage by hitting Control D. Now, why are we doing this? Well, we need to isolate the hair from the rest of the shot to start the coloring process. So with that top layer selected, let's zoom in, grab the pen tool and draw a nicely detailed mask around that hair, separating it out from the body. Try to grab it all if you can. Let's then hit M to drop down the mask menu, and then we're gonna right click and hit track mask. From there, we wanna make sure it's set to position over here. There we go. And then we'll hit the play button. Once it's done, let's turn off our bottom layer, hit F and let's feather this mask out anywhere around 65 to 70 pixels or so. And let's check out a preview. Okay, we have our hair isolated gang and it looks pretty decent. Let's then duplicate that by hitting Ctrl D. And for now, let's just turn that off for a second because we'll get back to that in a jiffy. Now gang, this is optional, but I really wanted to show you that this is what I did to build my shot. I actually felt that this blonde colored wig was a little bit too yellow and that Killer Frost has more of a white or platinum blonde look to her hair. So what I'm gonna do is head up to effect and grab Colorista 4. Now guys, this is a plugin I bought from Red Giant, so this won't be in your After Effects as a default unless you've also paid for it and picked it up. But the same principles apply to any coloring plugin you might use. Now, all I'm gonna do is just mute the color of that yellow a little by bringing down the saturation, there we go, and adding a little bit of blue to the highlights. If I turn that on and off, you can see that it's a subtle effect, but it makes a lot of difference to the shot. Okay, now we have that done. Let's have some fun and color this top layer. Now gang, believe it or not, we aren't using any change to color plugins. We're not using any hue, saturation, or selective color plugins. All I'm gonna do is use Colorista 4 itself to adjust this blonde hair until it looks brown. This is the key to making this effect look Believable in a sense, natural color correction. Well, I'll start by turning the layer back on. That'd help. So what I'll do is I'll start by busting down both the exposure to around minus 0.31 and turning the saturation down around 50 points. Minus 51 seems good. We'll then head up to the color wheels and I'm gonna start by shifting the mid tones to angle more to the gold here. And then we'll bust them down until we get a bit closer to a brown hair color. Hmm. Then let's bring those highlights down a touch. 
Okay, and finally, I'll pop the shadows down a little and then bring up the coloring on the shadows until, bam, we have a nice dark brown hair color. If I turn this on and off, you can see how dramatic a difference it is. And that's just using a color correction plugin. Crazy, right? Now, one problem we do run into is when we turn back on our footage layer, you can see that the color correction has bled onto our actor's face. So we need to do a bit of adjusting to our mask to compensate for that. So to do that, let's hit MM on the keyboard. And our first step is to lower the feather to around 40. Okay. I'll then bring the mask expansion down around minus six pixels. That's now working much better. And it's only grabbing the hair now with the coloring. Right, we've got the coloring done. So how do we transition between the two? Well, it's actually easier than you think. Let's start by adding a new black solid. There we go. And for now, let's turn that off. Next up, make sure nothing's selected and let's grab the pen tool. Let's head up and make sure our fill is set to white and our stroke is off because we're going to draw some shape layers. Our first one will be this side of our actor's hair. So let's draw a rough mask like so, just making sure that you get all the hair. And if you don't, we can just adjust this later if need be. We can then follow that up by drawing yet another shape layer on the other side, like so. What you should end up with is this weird looking shape. And believe it or not, that is exactly what we want. Next, let's turn on our black solid, grab both it and the shape layers, and then we'll right click and pre-compose them. We'll then follow that up by selecting our brown hair layer and changing the track mat mode to luma mat. So the idea here is that we're going to use those shape layers to guide the animation of our brown hair turning to white. In order to do that, let's open up the pre-comp and from there, let's select the first shape layer. We'll then head to effect, generate and grab gradient ramp. Let's move the start and end points up out of the frame so that our shape layer is all white again. And then we'll head to the point where you want the effect to kick in and we'll hit the stopwatch on both. From there, we can move forward, say, a few seconds and pull them both down so that our shape layer now becomes completely black like so. So this is what that looks like in motion. Nice. We can then follow that up on the other side. And done. Last step is to head up to effect, blur and sharpen and grab fast box blur. We'll then crank that up to around 45. We'll then copy and paste that onto our other shape layer. Done. If we head back to our final comp and check out a preview, you can see we now have our brown hair fading into blonde from the top down. Now again, you can get as detailed as you want with that gradient animation or say not use gradients at all, just as long as you have that white layer turning to black. And that's all you really need to drive this effect. But for now, gang, that is another killer frost effect. Mm, done. Add up all those steps, a little color correction, and a little bit of camera shake, and you get something like this. Today on Filmland, I'm wearing a wig for this effect. I'm really not comfortable wearing this. It looks stupid, doesn't it? You don't have to tell me. I know. So guys, that's my take on a really easy Killer Frost hair effect. As you can see, it's just a very simple track mask and some color correction, and you've got yourself a pretty cool effect. Now, one last thing guys, all of the Killer Frost sound effects are actually from our good friend The Blast and his Killer Frost sound effects pack. You can click the card above and check that out for yourself. But for now guys, that is my time. We've got a whole bunch more flash effects coming up, and I'm probably going to dip my toe back in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and who knows what else is coming up. I also wanted to let you know that the Film London 100k short film competition is now open for entries, so be sure to head to filmlondon.com and grab your entry pack today. But as always guys, if you did enjoy this episode, please smash that like button, I really do appreciate it. And hey, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button and turn those notifications on so you don't miss a single Film London episode. I've got two other episodes right over here. I've probably got something over here as well. I've got my social media crap above my head. Please consider joining the Patreon and supporting the show. 
And until I see you again, keep learning.